Hey gurus and welcome to this demo lesson, Implement Azure Firewall. I'm Chase, one of your Azure training architects here at Acloud Guru, a Pluralsight company. And as we go through this demonstration lesson, what we're going to get into is talking about a case study scenario for actually implementing Azure Firewall so that we can understand when we might want to implement this solution. Then we're going to go through the demonstration steps that we will go through in our demo of implementing Azure Firewall inside of the Azure Cloud Sandbox. And then we'll wrap up this lesson with some key takeaways from our demonstration. So without further ado, let's get started. So for a case study scenario, we have our familiar Control Alt Suites organization that has three virtual networks inside of our Azure Cloud Sandbox. Remember, the setup is going to be available in the resources of this lesson. We're going to have our Hub VNet, our Spoke 1 VNet, and our Spoke 2 VNet. Specifically, we're going to be working inside of this Hub VNet for deploying our Azure Firewall resource, and we're going to be working on routing traffic inside of that Hub VNet through that firewall. Now, I just wanted to bring something in that we're not necessarily going to work with in our demonstration, but just wanted to add it in there so that we can think about when we're setting up networks with Azure Firewall, how other networks may come into play. So there will be a peering connection if you want to test further on implementing Azure Firewall to route traffic from Spoke 1 into the Hub VNet Azure Firewall. However, this is not something we're necessarily going to go through in the demonstration. It's just something that I wanted to add and mention because when we're implementing Azure Firewall, commonly we'll be implementing it in a hub and spoke design, and we'll have multiple networks involved that we want to route through that Azure Firewall. So at this point, let's get into talking about the demonstration steps that we're actually going to go through in this demo lesson. We have our hub VNet with our hub subnet, where we have two virtual machines. We're going to start off our first step of the demo by creating an Azure Firewall subnet with a subnet size of slash 26 or larger. And that's because we have to create a specific size or within a specific site or range, right, the slash 26 or larger subnet in order for our firewall to have enough IP addresses to provide high availability. So there is recommended size, and in this case, we're going to use a slash 26. Then we're going to actually create that firewall resource, and we're going to create it in the same region as the VNet so that we can use it inside of this purpose-built keyword-based Azure Firewall subnet. Again, this subnet has to actually be named Azure Firewall subnet, just like this. And we're going to create it with a premium SKU, and we're going to create it for policy-based rule management and create a public IP address for this firewall so that we can associate it with the firewall and have a publicly reachable firewall. We'll then go through the step of creating a route table that has a route that says that if any traffic is destined, for 0.0.0.0 slash .0, .0, 0, it's going to go to the next hop of our firewall. And then we're going to associate that with our hub subnet. And at the end of this, we're going to evaluate the created resources in Review Azure Firewall. And we'll have a classically implemented firewall that gets created by the setup PowerShell script. And this way we can understand the differences between Azure Firewall and a Azure Firewall with policy-based rule management. All right. Gurus, let's make our way into the Azure Cloud Sandbox and get started. All right, Gurus, here we are inside of the Azure Cloud Sandbox, and I have pulled up the resources link for the script that we're going to run. Go ahead and get that. Once you've got that and you've got your Cloud Shell set up, paste that in and let that go off and create all the resources we need to set up this environment. Now, using Movie Magic, we're going to skip ahead to whenever this is done. While this is running, it's going to actually prompt you to say yes to create your Azure Firewall. Make sure to type Y and hit enter whenever you get prompted. And then the firewall is going to go off and create, which may take somewhere between 20 to 45 minutes. So feel free to grab a snack, a drink, get comfortable, and wait for the resources to deploy and make sure to accept that prompt. I'll see you once these resources have finished deploying. All right, gurus. So we're back and our script has finished deploying when we were prompted to say yes for creating your Azure Firewall. We accepted that prompt and that created our classically implemented firewall, which we'll take a look at here in just a moment. But first things first, we're going to minimize our Cloud Shell and we're going to actually go into our Hub VNet. So we'll go ahead and click type to sort these resources. We're going to go down to our virtual network and go into that Hub VNet. And we're going to go into subnets under settings and we're going to add a subnet. We're going to call this the Azure Firewall subnet and we're going to give this a slash 26 
and then we're going to click save and this is creating that purpose built Azure Firewall subnet that we're going to need for creating our policy based rules Azure Firewall Manager managed firewall resource. Now once that's done we can go up to the search bar we can type in firewalls we'll select firewalls under services we'll click create here and then we're going to select our resource group we're going to give our firewall a name we'll call this our hub firewall 01 and we're going to let it deploy into that region east us make sure that you match the region up with the virtual network and then we're going to select our premium tier for this one which we'll notice makes it so that we're using a firewall policy managed firewall as opposed to the classic managed firewall that we already have. If we chose standard, we could use a classic or policy based, but with premium, we only have policy based. And since we have policy based, we need to add a firewall policy. We'll call this our hub firewall policy. And we're going to click OK. That's going to create that policy for us. And for our virtual network, we're going to use an existing virtual network. We're going to use our hub virtual network. We'll select that. And then for our firewall, we got to create a public IP address. We're going to call this our hub firewall pip for public IP address 01. And we'll see that it's going to create it with a standard SKU and then static assignment. We'll click OK. We're not going to mess with forced tunneling here, but we could enable this here. We'll click review and create. It'll validate the deployment of this resource once it's passed. We'll click create and it's going to go off and create this firewall for us. So we'll be back in about 15 minutes to see if this resource has finished deploying. All right, gurus, so we're back and our Azure firewall that is a policy based firewall has finished creating. We're going to go into this resource real fast and real fast. We're going to grab this private IP address from our firewall. We're going to copy that to our clipboard for later. Now, something we'll notice here under settings on this firewall is that we have firewall manager under the settings. And that's because this is a policy based firewall and it's actually managed over at Azure Firewall. So if we wanted to go over there and visit that, we could actually take a look at the firewalls that we have that are managed by Azure Firewall Manager. We can also see the Azure Firewall policies that we have in place. We see that policy that we created. And we're going to get into more on talking about policies in future lessons, but I just wanted to show this real fast so that we could understand how this firewall itself is being managed by Azure Firewall Manager using policy based rule management. Now what we're going to do is we're going to come up to the search bar and we're going to complete our next step of creating a route table. We'll type in route table here. We'll select it under services. We'll click create and this is where we're going to create a route table. We'll put it in this same resource group. We're going to give this a name and we're going to call this our hub firewall route table. We're going to click review and create. It'll validate and then we'll click create to create this resource. It's going to go off and create this route table for us. And then what we're going to do is create a route on this route table using that private IP address that we just copied from our firewall. We'll go into this route table here. We're going to go into routes and we're going to click add to add that route. We're going to give this our name of hub route firewall. And then we're going to give it an IP address as the prefix. We're going to say traffic destined for anywhere. And then we're going to give it the next hop of a virtual appliance. Next hop address is going to be that private IP of that firewall. And we're going to click add here and this is going to update that route so that it will route traffic to our firewall when we associate it with a subnet, which is our next step. So we'll click on subnets under settings here. We'll click associate. We'll choose our virtual network. We're going to use the hub VNet here. We'll click our subnet and we're going to use the hub subnet and we'll click OK. And this is going to save that route table association to our hub subnet so that traffic destined for anywhere is going to be sent out through our firewall and we can actually validate whether or not this has actually worked. In our route table, if we come over to the left hand side of the blade, we scroll down to support and troubleshooting and click on effective routes. We see that we have our subnet selected and we're evaluating the scope of this route table. So we'll select our network interface and we're going to just select the VM01. 
Nick, and what we're going to see are the effective routes for that network interface. So we'll be able to determine here whether or not the route we've just created is taking effect. We'll see here that we had a system default route that is now in an invalid status, and this was the one that had the address prefix of 0, .0, .0, .0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0, which was like our user-defined rule, which we see here, and it's this user-defined route that we have here that is now active overriding this system default route and it's sending it to a virtual appliance and that virtual appliance is the private IP address of our Azure firewall. So we validated that setting up and implementing this firewall has successfully been completed. Let's make our way over real fast to the classic firewall just so we can take a quick look. We'll type in firewalls into the search bar here. We'll click on firewalls under services and we're going to click on this spoke to firewall that was created by our PowerShell script and the deployment of this environment. We see here under settings, rather than just seeing Firewall Manager, we see we also have Rules Classic here. And this is because this is a classically implemented firewall where we're managing the rules actually on the firewall resource itself. And if we wanted to, we could actually configure this firewall to be managed over at Azure Firewall Manager. If we come to the overview, we see we actually have the option to migrate this to a firewall policy instead of the classically implemented rules. This is the difference we're seeing here between classic firewalls and policy-based rule management. But classic firewall is probably going to eventually go by the wayside and we'll just be using policy-based firewalls. But it is important to know what we had and where we're moving when we're talking about Azure resources. All right, we've completed the demonstration portion of this lesson. Let's make our way back to the slides for a quick review. All right, gurus, congratulations on following along in the demonstration. Let's talk about the key takeaways here from this demo lesson implementing Azure Firewall. As we learned in this lesson, there are some prerequisites to actually creating a firewall, like a Azure Firewall subnet that's purpose-built for our Azure Firewall resource. And we have to specify a subnet CIDR range of slash 26 or larger in order for this to work for our firewall. Now, the firewall resource also has to be inside of the same region as we learned when we deploy that resource so that it can be associated with the subnet. And then we have to create a route table that has a route to our firewall that we associate at the subnet level and we can manage those rules on that firewall allowing traffic whenever we create that route association. Now we have classically implemented rules and policy-based rules as we saw for the different types of firewalls. And we're gonna get more into that in later lessons. And we also saw for our firewalls, we have different tiers. We have the standard SKU and the premium SKU, and these provide different features like we talked about in our slides in a previous lesson. All right, gurus, that concludes our demonstration lesson. Thanks so much for joining me in this lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson.